All right, so I want to restructure the app for man maintainability. So before we're going to add anything new to our app, I think that it's better that we now start thinking about how can we make this more readable, more well-structured, more logical, and uh, Shiny comes with a really great tool called Modules, and that's what we are going to use now. So, for example, if you go to our app, um, I mean, this isn't a really big app, and it, uh, on its own it's very fine uh, at this size, and you wouldn't really have to modularize this, but, you know, demonstration purposes, we will do it. So, for example, we have the upload functionality, and it's pretty much separate from this. I mean, it, it of course, uh, updates the drop-down menu here, but it doesn't have to live inside the same, uh, like, a UI function and the same server function. So what I'm going to do to show you how to make some modules is that I'm going to, well, modularize the upload functionality. Um, and that will, of course, come with some uh, challenges, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, fix them all. So a good way to uh, structure your project is to just say, okay, modules, we want somewhere to put our modules. And modules are just our files that uh, uh, that have to be stored somewhere. So we say R. This is where we're going to store our modules. Um, and you know, I'll just keep them straight in here, right? So I'll say I want a new script now. And this is going to be the upload module. And I'll just call it upload. Doesn't have to be more than that. So I make a new R file that's called upload, right? Um, and then we want a shiny. We want to make the module this uh, the module snippet, right? So we just call this upload and this uh, there. So now it changed both places when I used the snippet. All right. So modules they are pretty similar to what the the app uh, sorry the how how the app looked how it, it was structured. It's a server and we have the UI. Uh, here we also have the UI and the server function, but it's, well, modularized, so we're going to run this. This is going to be run, um, well, how do you say it? So, so in, in the app, uh, in here, app.r, we're going to be using this function, and then we're going to be using this function. And then we're going to pass some parameters and so on, but the functionality, the upload functionality, will be, will be uh, contained within these uh, objects. All right, so the first thing is that we, we're pretty much just going to copy these uh, uh, these UI elements here. So I'm just going to take these away. I'm going to put them right here. And so one thing that is about modules is that they have their own namespace. So that just means that I can have uh, an input ID that's called upload here, and then I can have another module maybe that's uh, that also has an upload functionality, and that one can, can also have the same input ID of upload, but only if I do this, say upload like that, ns upload, and ns. So it means namespace, this name. So what it really does is, maybe it will run, let's see. Uh, no, it won't run yet. So really, it just appends the name of the ID. Oh, we don't have an ID. It'll just say, um, like th this name, then uh, hyphen, start upload. Um, and this is really useful because now we don't have to make up names all the time. Um, so if you're not fully understanding what I mean by namespace yet, it'll be more clear as we go on. So right now we have these input, ID, input IDs. And they're called upload, start upload, and we, now we want to make the functionality. Well, we already have the functionality. We, uh, we had it here, so I'm just going to we'll copy this. And I'm going to put it in here like this. And now, uh, there's one problem I have with this, and that's the way these snippets work. So, usually, I don't have it like this. I say, this is, the I, this is the function ID. In here, we have module server ID, comma, and then we have the, uh, the server function. And that's a function, uh, it's a input, output, and sesh, session. Right, this like this. I will put you there, and let's put you in here. So these are this is just some like semantics or whatever you like to call it. Uh, this means uh, later on, if we want to call this, we can do it uh, um, using a certain function. Don't uh, get stuck up on this. Just uh, I recommend using it, doing this. 
but don't think too much about it. Um, all right, so now our server function of this module does, what does it do? Well, it uh, observes the start button, start upload button, which uh, it did before as well. And you might think now, well, how about this N uh, namespace thing? Doesn't, does that not have to be um, uh, like appended here? Well, actually not. The, um, Shiny does take care of this for you. So you can just use start upload down here when you're asking for the input, but when you're stating the input, you always have to use the namespace. All right, so you want to, so, well, the functionality is exactly the same. The, um, uh, the data path is the same. And we still, but here's our first problem. We now have a, um, we now have a, uh, what, we want to update a select input. Well, the problem is we're where we are right now in this uh, code, we are living inside this observe event. And outside of this, we're living inside the function. And outside of that, we're in the upload. So uh, in the upload uh, server function, right? And it's really hard for us to, or actually impossible for us to access this data select input that's in the app.r function uh, or app.r file. So we want some way to communicate from the module to this one, right? So what are we going to do? Well, how about we just make the module output the name, uh, the file names, or the like the, the list of names that are in um, uh, in our data folder, right? So this, you will write this, da, 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 okay. And you are in observe event here. All right, whoops. So what I want to do is make a, a reactive, and I'm going to make it event reactive. So, and this will be the file names, file names. Um, and that's going to be an event reactive. No, maybe just a reactive. Event reactive. Sure, let's just do that. Event reactive, and we, so event reactive is exactly like an reactive, but it will only run when the following input is uh, is uh, changed or something happens to it. Exactly like observe event, but now we are outputting something. All right. So what we want to listen to when the user says start upload. Great. Um, and then we wait for this. Wait for that. Well, we should actually wait for these, but. Uh, Oh, we're going to have a problem here, because now if we ask this one to get the data list... Hmm, I'll, I'll try. You know what? I'll just try. List files uh, path will be dot data. Yeah, dot data. All right. And now we're going to ask... Uh, we're going to ask this module to return file names. We're going to ask it to return this data, the data, the file names, right? File names. I think this is the syntax. This this is the one thing that I don't like about modules. It's that exactly when you want to output a reactive, it's really weird. You have to like call it again a reactive, and then you like do you call the whole reactive or do you call it like this? We're going to try this. It might not work the first time. Anyways, all right. Um, All right, so let's look here. Now we want the upload UI, and I'll just go in here and I'll say, I want to read you and I want to read you. Good. So we say upload UI and we're going to give it an ID. This is the upload ID. Good. We know that's all right. And then we want to call the server function within the server, like the module server function within the server function here. So we have columns that are select data still the same so we're gonna say so file names I'm just gonna do like this is the upload and the ID is upload so this ID here is the same one that's over here and this file names here well that's what I'm gonna store the output out of, of this one and then just for uh, like making it a bit more easy for myself I'm just calling it the exact same thing that this uh, module is outputting so that means that this reactive should, mm, well, actually we want this one to update every time. 
So we want to data. So yeah, so we want this one to update every time this one changes, right? Okay, how do we do that? I'm gonna try this like observe event file names. And here's the funny part file names, file names like this. So like we call this file names, that's what we have here. And then in our output, we, we made this to a list which is required, which we also called file names. So we are going to get an up. So when we say like output here, finally we get a list that has a name or has something inside of it called file names. And that thing is an reactive or has a reactive result. So that's going to be, that's why we're calling the parentheses here. It, this is kind of confusing. You have to get used to it. I have another way to do it that I like much better, but we're going to come back to that later. All right. So when this one changes, something happens to it. We want to update, select input and uh, we want input id which one is was the data selection input and the label is still select a data set and our choices are well it should now be file names file names this one so the names that come out of here oh okay i am having i like this is something that happens when i code i have a bad feeling about this like my brain has cut on some things that weren't good i'm going to quick because i'm talking while i'm doing it i'm not thinking about what i'm doing just trying to be quick well we'll see i have a really bad feeling about this it's probably is going to be making a lot of noise about how this one looks and uh about this event reactive maybe i don't know let's see what happens and it breaks immediately great um, error in as vector cannot course type closure to vector type character. Okay, so this is the exact thing. This this is like standard error when you use reactives. It doesn't know. Uh, so like when it says a, a closure, that's because you're some some place here. It thinks that you want the reactive and not the values within the reactive. Um, poo. Okay, as is it here? I will try this. So I want these to be reactive, the data to be reactive. Let's try this. Uh, let's try this again. So we're just going to store this or assign this again. Okay. Um, okay. My, all right. This still works. And my problem is that, uh, of course, I don't have more data sets to upload. So I am going to... First off, I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to delete, oops, I'm going to delete uh, these two. All right, now this shouldn't, oh, all right, it's going to break now. Oh, kind of open connection. All right, whatever. We're going to uh, refresh the page and say, what? Hmm, that is weird. We should not be like this. All right, full refresh. We'll go back here, run the app. Do this. All right, now it works. It's probably because I called the list of files here outside of the app, so it doesn't update you know, even though the files were gone. Um, anyways, now we're gonna try to upload this. Uh, Faithful was uploaded. Here it is. All right. Oh yes, it is working. Fantastic. So we just modularized the the uploads. So to recap, instead of having so if you go to upload module, instead of having this um, these inputs in our uh, app file, we just have pa have packaged it all in this function, upload UI, which is a module. The, this is the UI module. Uh, and this, the functionality that was here before has now been put into the module's server function, which is this one. Um, so the problem but then now we have the problem of that not, not everything is within the same closure, and a closure is like the, the functions uh, like code. So this is a these two uh, areas. So the area between these two are is a closure. Then we have this. This is a closure, and then here we have a close. We have a lot of closures, and it's hard to access data through these closures. So we had to ha have some way of telling the app that are that something has changed. So we what we did is we outputted the file names. That uh, the new file names after we had uploaded our data, and we asked the app to listen to this data. So 
to listen to this um, uh, uh, the change. So if anything changed in these file names, well then the app had to uh, update the UI. And when it updated the UI, it allowed us to choose the new data set, right? So one more time, we'll just take orange, upload it. It uploads, you see it uh, updated the selection and here it is, it works, fantastic. So that was modularizing. Next, we're gonna maybe structure the, so now we restructured our app code, you know, the program, but we want, also want to restructure the UI. So maybe we want like a, a large uh, map navigational bar up here that like separates the upload for itself and then the, where you selected data. And then we can add uh, more functionalities like editing your the selected data and uh, well, a lot of things that we can do. And that's when we, we are going to do it. So I hope you follow along and uh, you'll see you in the next part.